Okay. Okay, okay. Let's see if this live stream works. Uh, so the intro, awesome. So it's working, good. Every time I do this, every few months, it's uh, a little hard to make sure all my settings are right because things do change and computers do break and software is not foolproof, as I know very well. So welcome, everyone. Uh, I just had a whim um, of a choice today to, to go ahead and throw a live stream up there. I realized the, the uh, last one wasn't uh, since last May or uh, May of this year, I mean, some months ago. And honestly, I don't have any videos currently in the pipeline. And I thought too much time has been elapsing between videos. So here I am as a stopgap measure live stream. You know, it's sort of the sort of the stopgap solution until I get something else uh, posted later, right? My last video, uh, oh, oh yeah, hi, uh, hi everyone. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I see all your comments here off to the side. My uh, little laptop screen I down over here is um, where my comments are. I got two screens over here I'm looking at all, all one flat panel here. So I'm looking here, looking here, and I'm looking here, uh, the most important spot. <laughs> so my, my beer. Prost, skull, cheers, uh, whatever you want to call it in your language of choice. Uh, is, this is my new beer mug. If you haven't seen this yet, uh, see if I can turn it to the light and see it. I just got three dozen of these a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, got about a dozen of them at least already on the way out the door. So uh, thanks to you who bought some to help defray the costs because I wanted to get me about a half dozen or more for my own set, my, for my own personal collection. And these things, uh, I can only order them in minimum quantities of let's say three dozen or more upwards of hundreds or thousands, right? And I, so um, uh, so thank you for helping me to defray the cost because I don't need three dozen mugs. I only need a half dozen or so. So again, cheers. All right, uh, let me look at some of the comments here uh, really briefly here, um, let's try to get them. Tr I'm trying to stay ca uh, caught up here, folks, because the last time I did this, I was uh, getting way, way behind. Um, trying to answer questions and things. Uh, let's see, so some of the first questions here uh, was a question about an update on my Kamado Joe. So for those of you who uh, saw a couple of those videos there uh, where I uh, not only was complaining about my Kamado Joe, but uh, had some videos showing uh, sort of a wood crutch or a wood stick I was using to hold the lid up. Um, so for those of you who, are, who aren't aware of this, uh, ceramic Kamados are very heavy. The bigger ceramic com models, like my Big Joe, is very, very heavy. And that lid, uh, the old the old generation, the first generation model of which I have, and I hear some, some comments about the second generation also having a problem too, but I'm not, I can't verify that, where the hinges run out of adjustment. And even before they run out of adjustment, uh, you have to like lift that heavy lid all the way up over, uh, all up over your head basically to open up this big giant uh, dome and hope and pray that it stays there. And uh, mine has come crashing down, uh, almost crushed some fingers. L luckily, I, I still have them all. Other people have told me, it, you know, theirs have fallen down and crushed their hands. I am not happy with this product. Uh, not, uh, I, I am quite happy with ceramic Kamados or even the stainless steel or the uh, double walled steel ones like the Acorn or the Keg that I got recently this summer. Those are okay, right? But um, Anyway, so what happened is, is that I got, after about four and a half months, I finally got replacement parts sent to me on, under warranty, so I didn't pay for them, which, which is fine, but uh, I got it on there back in November, tightened it up, and I've been using that ever since, but I've, always, I've already had to make several adjustments, and I'm starting to run out of travel yet again, and I might be near the end of my warranty period, and that means I'm going to have to cough up my own dough uh, going forward every probably couple of years for new hinges, which I think is BS. Right. Uh, so anyway, um, 
So uh, also, as you see me doing this, I'm out in my garage. I got mosquitoes everywhere, moss flying around. So if you hear me shout mosquito, put your hands over your ears because I'm about to clap my hands and kill one, all right? Because they are everywhere. I even got some bug spray here. The some some cutter here, spraying around. I I I have a fan blowing on me to keep the bugs away from me. But being out in my garage is the quietest, calmest place for me to be in my house, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, see, I, I'm talking already, and I'm going right past you guys' comments here. Let me scroll up to the top here again, guys. I uh, apologize. Um, let's see what I got going on here. Oh, yeah, everyone. Uh, Ken? Okay. Uh, no, is there screen activity now? I assume there is. No one else has said anything yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was the last thing that I, we all brewed? Well, you, you may have well know. Personally, I just brewed with uh, Paul and Mike up at Home Brewing TV in Wisconsin. I did that video uh, collaboration with them about a week or, well, we actually brewed a couple of weeks ago. Put the video up last week. And uh, that was a rye PA with... Uh, with wet hops in it from Paul's backyard. Uh, if you haven't seen that video video yet, go check it out. It's actually um, it was a it was a really fun brew day, and uh, actually I'm kind of looking forward to to doing more of those style of videos. Uh, honestly, um, it, it was a blast. Chad and I went up there and hung out with uh, Paul and Mike. They're going to come down here and do a brew day here in my garage at my house sometime. Uh, well, this fall I hope. Uh, we, we don't have a date yet. A date set yet, but we're working on it. Uh, but anybody else out there who um, who wants to do a YouTube cross collab, get a hold of me. Let me know. I think that was a blast. I would definitely do that um, again and again. Let's see. Uh, what else got here going on here? Um, okay. So you did, uh, so David Pescatello, you got the, you, you kicked the keg on the whipped beer recipe. Excellent. I hope you enjoyed it. It, it looks like you did. Uh, I unfortunately have not been able to make my Belgian wit beer, uh, my my lair garden, I call it, right, uh, this year at all. Uh, just it's never worked out. I mean, in all, uh, you know, I got uh, the biggest problem is free time. The other problem is, uh, well, I made I think a cider instead of a wit beer for for my springtime beer, and I've moved on already to now my late summer and now upcoming fall beers. Ooh, fall beers, right? I gotta start thinking about what kind of beer I want to brew next. Um, so the fall, I think last year about this time, I brewed a, an English brown ale. Uh, I did a video on that too. Um, it, uh, I'm not sure yet. You, usually fall beers are generally pale ales, IPAs for me. Uh, I'm starting to get a hankering for a nice. Uh, Hoppy Imperial Stout again. I haven't brewed one of those in a while, so we'll see. Um, actually, we'll see probably sooner than later too. I probably I probably could say something now. I uh, for the, for those of you who saw my poll on my YouTube community tab there about uh, whether or not I was going to review the Brewy Plus, which is a uh, which is the latest version of the Brewy. For those who don't know what the brewery is, uh, it's an all-in-one brewing device. It looks like a pair of, of sinks, basically. You got a, a sink here and a sink here, basically, and it fills water. It's all automated and controlled with a programmable touch button thing. And um, they're going to send me one this week or next week, I think, to do some or do a video on. We'll see if I do more um, after that, right? And so I needed to decide on a beer pretty darn quick. So if you got any ideas. Throw them at me. Let's see. Look at some more comments here. What am I going to make a Christmas beer from Patrick? A uh, that's a good question. I've been getting that a lot actually. Um, it's funny because you know I always make fun of uh, Home Depot or Menards or Ace Hardware or any sort of places, stores, department stores, even putting up Christmas decorations in August. It drives me batty, but uh, I guess they're looking ahead, and that's a good question. You're you're thinking ahead, right? Uh, truthfully, I do not like what people call Christmas beers, or even uh, I've got a lot of questions on on uh, pu pumpkin beers. I don't like pumpkin beers. I don't like spiced beers other than the the wit beer with some coriander and stuff like that. I just don't like the cloves and the cinnamons and all that stuff that people put in these beers. I I want a beer that's refreshing and drinkable, the wash down something that I made that's really good. You know, I don't want to drink the beer and have the beer be the meal. I want to have a meal and drink the beer with my meal. 
So, you know, cheers to that, right? Mm, brewing a coffee, I have not tried that. Uh, I've, I don't know, <laughs> maybe something new to try. The problem is, guys, is that I don't have a whole lot of free time to brew frequently. So I really got to be highly selective about what I do brew. And when I do brew, I want to brew a lot of it. So I don't, so I don't have to brew too soon again right away. And if I make a big batch of coffee beer, I may or may not like it. So if I do that, I, I would consider that for me to be an experimental beer for me to try maybe this winter on the grandfather um, or maybe on the stovetop with that sous vide stick, that brew in the bag stick that thing that I did back in March. So maybe I'll try a small batch of that and see. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, Dion, you ordered your grandfather connect today? All right, yeah. I mean, I I like the grandfather, uh, and actually that 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 brings me up to a point I was going to talk about the the grandfather. You a lot of you a lot of you have asked me, uh, do I still like it after all this time? I think it's a great all that's almost in one device, right? I mean, you still need an extra. Um, Hot, hot liquor tank basically to, to work with it anyway but i like it i do uh there's a couple of things i don't care for it um is the slow flow rate through the counterflow chiller i think the pump in there is a little underpowered in my opinion um but it does the job can't complain too much there right it does come with the, with, with the counterflow work chiller as part of the whole kit so it's part of the whole package right but the thing that um is starting to starting to wear on me is the recipe formulator. Now the formula, so, and, I, and, I've, and I've had this beef since like day one, but it's starting to, to, to irk me because I'm having to print and work my own little personal spreadsheet over here to prove check numbers in the grandfather recipe site because the grandfather recipe site does not have an entry field for mash or extract efficiency anywhere in there. They have one for brew house efficiency, which is completely useless. For home brewers, because you're, I mean, I don't care about the overall losses from, from, from mashing all the way through the packaging. I already know what those are. They're on my spreadsheet. I know I plan for those. What I care most about is my sugar extract, my extract efficiency coming out of the mash so I can take other people's recipes and adapt them and adjust them and scale up the grain or scale down the hops or vice versa to account for the differences in the extract efficiency between the grandfather and some other system where I got the recipe from, even my own uh, 20 gallon spike system, for example. So I've already complained about it um, through their help desk system there, asking them to put one in. Uh, they said they'll look into it, but you know. uh, let's see. So anyway, going back to that again, uh, I think my next grandfather brew, uh, it, it's not gonna be soon. I'm, I'm gonna wait till it gets colder out so I can, mosquito, told ya. Cover your ears. Uh, so, where was I? <laughs> Time to mosquitoes. Oh, uh, I think my next grandfather brew, I am going to use my spreadsheet and abandon the recipe uh, por portion of the app and uh, the website. I think I, I'm, I'm going to go old school, go, go back to using my own spreadsheet, but still use the device in a ma manual mode process and see how that goes. Let's see. And some of the other questions I got about the grandfather. I'm sorry. I just, I'm still on this topic here. Um, so a bunch of you, as far as the extract efficiency goes, a lot of you have asked me what it is. Well, it does vary based upon your grain bill. Uh, let's say, so my first couple of beers that I've done videos on on there, my efficiencies were surprisingly high, uh, 92 and 93% extract efficiency, mash efficiency. I mean, that is really great, right? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, so, I was surprised, or not surprised, but I was kind of like uh, caught off guard by how much it dropped when I did that Hyphavizen beer for Shane Cates, the uh, auction winner that I did a video on back in July. We brewed a batch of Hyphavizen on, uh, on, the, on the grandfather, and my efficiency was about somewhere in the low 80s. Now, it turns out that's because wheat um, has to mash longer or there is something, you know, it, it's not as efficient uh, with large portions of wheat in your grain bill, I guess. I, I, I forgot about that. I haven't brewed a wheat beer in a while and uh, paid the, the hit for that. But anyway, let's see what we got here. Uh, another, another sip of beer while I read the comments. A zombie dust. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, Spark and Steel, you live in Missouri. You want to try zombie dust? 
uh, the store I buy them at. <laughs> well, that was part of my problem for a long time, right? I didn't have a store to buy them at up until about a year or two ago or so when I started seeing them here and there at some of the liquor stores. Now it's like you almost need to know the secret password at some of these liquor stores in order to get the beer. They usually don't have them on the store shelves. You have to ask if they have anything behind the counter. And if they don't know you, they'll say no. If they know you or are you polite and you know the right words, they might go, oh, we have a couple six packs behind the counter. Now, I have been seeing them more and more around northern Illinois here, around where I live. But but I've seen them for as high as $20 a six pack, uh, $18, $16. I used to get them for like 10 bucks. I've seen them now for like 11 and 12 at Benny's Beverage Depot, for example, that's a chain of liquor stores in the area, at least here. And uh, I just still think it's too high. I'd rather just brew, brew it myself um, most of the time here. So uh, it, it is hard to find. Once they do get a pallet full, it's gone within hours, basically. So let's see here. Cheers from Columbia. Oh, look at this. I got some fans from far away. Yeah, welcome to the channel. Uh, I got a comment on the. Oh, this. Mouse isn't working very well. I just skipped over a whole bunch of stuff here, folks. Hold on. Let me scroll back to the top again. I have a crappy little mouse here. It doesn't have a real scroll wheel on it. So I have to kind of rub this thing, and it doesn't really work well. Oh, there we go. See, something just happened there. Uh, sorry for dragging this out here, folks. I just lost where I was here. Uh, in the meantime, have another beer. Okay, I'm getting back to where I was. Um, there we go. Oh, uh, beers, Jack and Barbecue. Yeah, help help on the bacon video. I'm, gl I'm glad you liked it. Um, I have not also not made a batch of bacon this year. I don't know where the, the time has went. This summer, uh, spring, summer have come and went. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to get back into more indoor type cooking this fall. And I definitely plan on doing that again. But you're right, that bacon is awesome. Let's see. You brewed my half, you brewed my half advising, Ken. Excellent. Yeah, that, that's a good beer, too. Just like I was saying before, uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, let's see. The full ceramic acorn is fantastic. Yep. I, yeah, I've seen your videos, bro. Yeah, yeah. You got a ceramic one there. Now, that didn't exist back when acorn, what, what got me into the whole Kamado cooking was the char griller, king griller. It wasn't even called the acorn yet. This is how long ago I bought this thing, back in like 2011. The acorn didn't even exist as a product. It was... It was at Menards, and it was it was called the Char Giller King Cooker, and like what? Okay, whatever. It's round. It's an egg shaped thing, whatever. And and it served me well for a number of years until it started to to, uh, to go bad on me. Basically, it started to stick and rust and corrode and burn out and stuff. So I gave it to my brother in law, <laughs> and he still has it and still uses it. But uh, I wish they had one back then too, because I may have got that instead. But uh, you know, I so. Back when I was looking at Kamados, uh, there wasn't anything under a thousand bucks anywhere. And now you have the Pit Boss has got one. You got the, the Acorns got a ceramic one. There's a number of other um, off-brand or newer brand ones, discount brands, right? And it is what it is. Uh, I, I do wonder about the warranty, though. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I've had to replace a couple ceramic parts already on, under under warranty. So I hope they uh, do have a good warranty program for that. Let's see. Uh, Chet Greenwood. Thanks, Larry. Watched your video on recirculating work chiller, and I bought a pump this week to try on my own. All right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that thing has saved me a ton of water. Uh, what it did is create a small hassle for me that I have to go out and buy ice or make ice or whatever, right? But uh, not a big deal anymore. I actually uh, had bought a, an upright freezer since then, and now I, have, so now I can store ice in there and just have it on hand all the time. But, yeah, that saved my water bill plenty. I mean, I would, I would go through 30, 40 gallons of cooling water sometimes uh, as, when I tried to count how many buckets it filled once upon a time. It was just like eye-opening. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, let's see. Um, love my show on YouTube. Thank you very much. That's all. Oh, that's why I'm here now, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Greens from Ireland. All right. Another fellow from Ireland. I can't do the accent well, so I'll just toast to you. Yeah. And... Uh, have I considered growing my own hops? Well, uh, I, <laughs> I think I answered this on my last live feed or the, or the one before, but uh, yes, I have considered it, and no, I have not. And I can kick myself in the butt, right? Hindsight's always 2020. The problem was 18 years ago, I moved into this house, 
thought it was going to be a three to five year starter home. I was going to move someplace else and all that. Well, it's 18 years and counting, and I still have no plans to move yet. A desire, yes. Actual plans, no. But my plans are to move every year, and every year it gets getting pushed out a year. So I have not planted any hops in all these years, and I kind of wish I did in hindsight. But if I do it now, then watch me. I'll move next year, and I'll, and I'll never get any hops out of it. So uh, let's see. What else we got here? A DIY bottle filler video. Well, that's a pretty good uh, idea. I actually, I don't have one, um, mainly because, you know, when I went to kegs from bottling, I'd never want to see another bottle again, uh, you know, but I do have some growlers. I did buy that intertap uh, faucet with the growler attachment now, so I've been using my growlers more often when, when I go places. I don't feel like I need a bottle, really, because we usually drink it that same night, usually anyway. So I don't see one in my future, but if I do decide to get one or build one, I will do a video on it. Let's see. What am I drinking on? Uh, well, actually, I have to admit, folks, this is not homebrew. Yeah, I know. I, I uh, killed the those two kegs of that Zaka Pale Ale. Um Pretty quickly, actually. Well, because I've been carting it around from from party to party, right? I I brought it to uh, my uncle's 60th birthday party. We killed a small keg of that. I brought it to a poker game a couple weeks ago. Killed that. Then I uh, brought it to Paul and Mike's for that home brewing TV video collab that we did, and we didn't drink all of it, but we we drank a, a good part of it, and pretty much killed it. So I have no beer in the queue except the right the right PA, which is still needing to be kegged probably maybe later tonight for all I know. So what I'm drinking, it's a long-winded answer, but I am drinking my a beer from my new favorite brewery, Half Acre Beer Company, their Tuna Extra Pale Ale. Uh, I've actually really been a big, I've become a big fan of this uh, brand of beer, Half Acre. Uh, there's only one beer I've had there that I, I, that I did not like, and it was their Pony Pilsner, right? But every other beer they got, their tuna, their Vallejo, which I have right here in my fridge too, uh, they're gone away, they're daisy cutter. Uh, that's that's enough for them for now. That's, that's all I can think of. I like every single one of them. I buy them every time I see them at, at the store. So that's what I'm drinking now. Let's see, Uruguay. All right, you're, you're bottling uh, you're bottling 15 liters of my amber ale. Now that was a good all around beer, and that might actually might be a a good fall beer, but maybe I, I might make it a little, a little more hoppier this time because it's fall. I like hoppier beers in the fall. But that amber beer was really good. I, yeah, so I think you'll enjoy that. Chris Englehart, thank you very much for the compliment. Uh, going down the list, love your show from Derek. Wondering if I uh, have, have any how-to show shows coming up, like teaser builds, fermenter builds, or anything equipment. No, guys, I don't. This is unfortunate. I have nothing in the in the queue. I, I, I've been traveling a lot this summer, uh, and then all of a sudden, the summer was over. Kids are now launched back into school. Got one kid in uh, soccer, one kid in volleyball, and different activities every day. Um, I'm just trying to stay afloat and go to my day job and get that job done and do this on the side while doing everything else. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I've got too many balls in the air, <laughs> dirty minds, actual juggling balls in the air, and... Uh, Oh, retracted. Okay. All right. Uh, so currently, no. Am I going to build anything in the near future? Uh, I may. I don't know. I, I don't have, I, I don't feel like I have a need for anything. I can't do a keyser in this house. I don't have space for one. That's basically it. I I, I have this tiny little house. I'm, I'm out in my garage, for crying out loud. This is the only space I have that's mine, um, except for my bar downstairs. And I have a small kegerator that barely fits behind there. So I don't really have room for a keyser. That's a big Downside to my hobby here, living where I'm at, I don't have space for more than two corny kegs at a time in a kegerator, and that kind of limits, again, how often I can brew, because if I have a bunch of beer sitting waiting to go in the fridge and sitting at room temperature in the keg, I just don't like that idea. So, that's yeah, but if I do build something, I'll do a video of it, of course. Let's see, pumpkin ale, yeah, a blackberry wheat, that sounds delightful. Where is the scroll bar? Here it is. Uh, stouts. Have I used a grain father to cook a nice steak sous vide? Excellent. <laughs> uh, 
that's a very good thing. You, you can actually use your grandfather just like a sous vide device. You remember I did the Pico Brew, that, that, that little coffee-shaped appliance last year. I, in fact, I still have one of those uh, Pico packs left to uh, make on from there. Uh, I tried to order more, and they're just so so darn expensive, like 30 bucks plus $25 in shipping and stuff. you got to be kidding me for like a little one and three gallon batch of beer. Uh, no, no. So, but it, it, that, that did sous vide. The, the grandfather can do sous vide. And I have a sous vide um, stick that I got from, uh, I can't remember the brand now. Oh, darn it. Uh, Avalon Bay. So I, I have three ways to do it. The grandfather will, will be bigger for a big, bigger kind of meat, like a brisket or something. So if I want to do a sous vide brisket, I think it would be the grandfather all, all the way. Let's see. All right, all right, gang. Uh, trying to get caught up on you here. I only bookmark till nine, so it's a little more half hour. I'll, I can stay longer if I need to, but I do want to get the rest of my packages of my beer mugs that I'm shipping out tonight. In fact, in fact, I have one of the boxes here. There's a there's a beer mug right inside there. So this is going out to one of my subscribers who bought one. I got a bunch more here behind the camera. I sent out. I set them up five to seven today. I got about four more right here and more in the pipeline. So so they're selling okay. So I do appreciate your support there. Let's see what we got here. Uh, a Berliner Weiss. That has actually been, uh, a, that's been on my mind. The problem I have with that is it's a sour beer, right? And I'm a little paranoid, maybe irrationally so, but I'm afraid of tainting something in my house or my brewing equipment and having it sort of sour uh, my, any of my future batches. And since I use all my same equipment for batch after batch, I, I don't have a separate dedicated set of sour equipment, uh, you know, or anything like that. I'm a little bit paranoid about it. I would like to do it if I get the confidence to do it. Um, but I've been burned before. I mean, for example, when, when, when I first started making I think uh, sourdough bread, I uh, started making my natural yeast starters. I think I got some of that yeast somehow into a batch and it was a little off tasting and that kind of concerned me just, just, just from doing that. So um, I would like to, I just got to get the confidence or, or I guess just the confidence to go, just to go do it. Uh, let's see. Brew a Vienna Munich or Fest beer in that brewery thing. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with, uh, at fest beers is that they you, you know they're like lagers usually the for example like the october fest or the marisons i guess those are actually lagers not not ales and uh, i don't have lager in space because i don't have a keezer <laughs> so you know this is how this goes i'm pretty much stuck with doing the ales un unless i want to kick everything out of my kickerator for two months like i did that one time last year when i made that v vienna lager video awesome beer don't know if i want to wait two months to drink it uh, without anything else in the uh, kicker here you know, to go with it. I mean, uh, let's see. So the, the name of the store I buy the zombie dust from. Well, again, that was um, the one I would get it from would be Benny's Beverage Depot here in the Chicagoland area. But a local liquor store down the street now stocks it. They but they want twenty bucks for it, and I just, you know. Uh, let's see, uh, Irish Red Beers. I do. In fact, one of the first, be well, you're about to laugh at me probably, but uh, this is back now, don't get me wrong, this is back in the late 80s, or early 90s when uh, Killian's Red wasn't a Coors or Miller beer or whoever owns them now. Uh, it was actually a pretty decent uh, Irish Red style beer at the time. Have I had it in years? No, I haven't. Uh, would I like to make one? Sure. Uh, that's also maybe on my possible to-do list this winter. Actually, I'm, I'm going to write that down really quick here because that is a possibility. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, and Shane. Hey, bud. How's it going, man? Good to, see, uh, good to hear from you, at least again. I'm sure you can see me. I can't see you, of course. Um, so, okay. So, Shane says, uh, for those of you who don't know, Shane came down here back in July. Again, I'm repeating myself again, but he came down. He... he uh, he was the winning bidder in a charity auction I did. Uh, I auctioned myself off for a brew day back in April. He was the winning bidder. 
he came down here in July. We brewed a batch of the beer he chose, which was a Hypervisen, and on uh, the grandfather of which he wanted to also to see a batch of beer made on. So his question or his statement is, is this, hey, Larry, quick update. I did my first all-green brew, first kegging and first first carb of the keg. Two months ago, Shane didn't even have a keg, folks, I think, right? I mean, <laughs> I think you went and bought that keg right before you came on a visit. He says, it turned out great. Thanks to your vids and first-hand info. Cheers, brother. Stay brewing. All right, man. Cheers. <laughs> All right, man. That is that is good news, bro. All right. Uh, okay. So is that okay? That mini fridge has stopped working behind you. Yes. Uh, actually, no. Yes and no. I <laughs> I I didn't take care of it yet. I. Uh, that's a new fridge. I actually did complain to them because I thought it was nonsense that it was. Um, that it failed after six months, and not just six months. I mean, it was cold probably four of those six months, uh, you know, so it wasn't even hardly working. And then when it finally got a little warmer out, that, that's when it died. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And they were going to want me to uh, pay to have it shipped back to to the, to them, and which I thought was kind of ridiculous because shipping was going to be 50 to 70 bucks. I mean, it was, you know, it's a, it a big, heavy uh, box. And so I called my contact over there who sent it to me originally, and, and he was able to get a new one sent to me, and I sent the old one back uh, on them, okay? So I did not take care of it. Part of me <laughs> wanted to take care of it, and for those of you who don't know, um, I was going to take it out to a isolated uh, range somewhere and blow it up, basically. So um, I didn't. I still, so I got the new one. I'd rather have a second new working fridge than a shut up junky one that, that I have to now throw away. So, so I took the lesser of the two years there, basically. But but uh, but uh, thanks for asking that. If I'm ever by up, okay, so Ryan says, if I'm ever up by lacrosse, look me up. All right. Oh, I do pass through lacrosse a lot. I, I, I go out to uh, Brandon, uh, South Dakota, uh, outside of Sioux Falls to see some fit family out there um, every year, basically. So uh, if, if we ever stop or need to stop in around lacrosse, I'll have to think about that. Thanks. Let's uh, see. I'm um, going down the list here, guys. Everyone's picking up a lot of stuff here. Uh, she. Well, while I'm reading, again, cheers. Mm. Mosquito. Oh, no, it flew away. I was just going to smack it right there on the screen. Okay. Um, boy, they make the scroll bar on this chat thing so hard to see. Okay, coming down. Um, Warm loggers. I've never, well, you know, I've I've been reading some rumblings and watching people talk about uh, fast made loggers. Uh, warm loggers, I guess, uh, I guess that would be, are you asking about like the uh, steam beers, like the California common ales? I haven't done that yet. That would be on my list. A California common or a California steam beer. That's not bad. I've been wanting to make one of those ever since I had uh, Anchor Steam. Years ago, I've been wanting to reproduce that. Okay, let's see. Uh, how long have I, okay, what's the longest I have ever left beer in the fermenter before transferring to a keg? Uh, beer I left in my fermenter probably three weeks or more, three to three and a half weeks. Uh, actually, it was just this year, actually. I was on vacation. So I couldn't get back to it to uh, rack it within two weeks. So it was about an extra week and a half that that it stayed uh, in the fermenter, and it's fine. I mean that that was the Azaka Pale Ale, or one of the two of them, I think it was. Both of them. Can't remember now. No, it's already been two months, or a month or more. Anyway, I can't remember. But yes, yes, uh, and it, and it's fine. And there's nothing wrong with leaving um, your beer in a keg for for more than a few days. Like uh, again, I I've, I've ranted on this before, right? But um, a, a lot of the common homebrewing knowledge and old, older homebrewing books, uh, pretty much all are all in lockstep with one another, saying you know that you had to ferment a primary fermenter for a few three to five days, and then you had to like rack it to a secondary fermenter for secondary fermentation for the rest of the point. And there is no such thing as secondary fermentation; it's still fermenting as it was and would have been in the in the original fermenter. But now you just did unnecessary work, risk your beer getting exposed to oxygen and contamination, 
all for what turns out in hindsight and proven to be basically a myth, right? And I was mad when I realized that too. So don't, you know, don't shoot the messenger here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, and I've left wine, um, w w which is m many times stronger uh, in terms of alcohol um, and, and, and hostility towards yeast. Um, and I've, I've left wine in the carboy for longer, um, for longer than a couple months, a few months at a time in between rations. And it's not a problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, I haven't decided on bottle or kegs yet, leaning towards bottles. Okay, grow your own. I was going to say skip the bottles and go to keg, but I think to get a better appreciation of kegging and the costs and the ease you into that, you might want to do the bottling first to see how bad it is. I, honestly, I, that's bottling is what made me walk away from homebrewing the first time. <laughs> I was starting to homebrew for a couple of years. I was so tired of scrubbing and rinsing all the bottles and drying them and sanitizing them and rinsing them. And I got water everywhere and I got 60 bottles all all left and right and, and all kinds of states of uh, cleanliness and not sure if they're clean all the way and all that. And, and, and then when I realized, hey, isn't a keg just a very large single bottle that you can reach inside and clean and a lot, a heck of a lot easier than, than trying to scrub, scrub a brush in a, in a, in a, in a bunch of bottles and things. So I, I'd say if you don't want to invest in the kegging equipment, uh, do, do the bottling because it will convince you to spend the money on the kegging, honestly. Uh, so I, ho I hope that helps. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, okay. Is it Malay Patel or Malay Patel? It says, much appreciated on the spreadsheet. Uh, any additional advice for first brew and a brew in a bag setup? Well, uh, I could go off on tangents, but with everyone watching and not wanting to hear about all of that, uh, I can just say your number one priority should be cleanliness and sanitation. That's what everyone should be telling everyone who's getting into brewing. Don't um, skip washing your equipment and sanitizing your equipment because those little germs and bacteria and things out there, they love sugar. So if you don't uh, keep them out of there, they'll, they'll make your beer taste bad. So if you want the best bang for your dollar, focus on sanitation. Let's see. Um, recipes sound very familiar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Now, Dion Ross, I left there in the fermenter for three or four months at a time. And trust me, it's definitely fine. Nicely conditioned. See? See, there you go. Now, I, uh, th three and four months. Yeah. <laughs> I've never tried it, but he has. So um, I guess it's better than I thought, right? What we also got here. I see that Second Amendment sticker in the background. Nice to see some support. Yeah, cheers, man. I am an unapologetic Second Amendment rights advocate, a life member, and a dominant member of the NRA, and I'm damn proud of it. So, salute. But that's not what my channel is about, and I don't talk about it other than just now. So the stickers are there because it's part of who I am. I got stickers everywhere. I got things all over my house that, that say who I am. I got different shirts that, that say different things. Uh, my focus here is on cooking and home brewing. So if you disagree with what I just said, I can't change your mind. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm just here to, to brew, drink beer, and cook food and share that with you guys. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, nitro brews. Yeah, that would be cool too. I, uh, I have to get a new tap or a new nozzle. Now with that inner tap nozzle, the inner tap faucet system that, that I got this year. In fact, I actually, uh, I'm, I am going to do another video soon. Uh, I'll just tell you what it is now. Um, I bought, months ago, I did a short video on the intertap faucet that I bought to fix my leaky perlic faucet. Now, um, I bought the option of the intertap with the spring in it because I wanted the handle to like spring back every time I let go of the tap because sometimes it would stick open and keep pouring. Well, I realized that this system is so good. I don't, I don't even need the spring. I, I just close the tap and it's, sealed. I, I have no paranoia left in, in my mind about uh, a keg being all over the floor when I walk away, like like I did with the Perlick tap. So I discarded the spring and bought their full control tap now. So uh, what convinced me to do that was when I made that, uh, that cherry cider, 
I had to jack up the PSI to like 25 or more PSI over my 10 or 11 or 12 PSI I do for beers in order to keep the carbonation in the cider. Well, my as, as you know, with my that I have a 10 foot length of beer line to balance about 11 to 12 PSI pressure. I had double that, so I had a lot of foam in my ciders. And, uh, you know, I, I so I had to turn on the pressure off and on. It was a mess. I, I could have put longer hose in, of course, but it's just one batch of cider. I didn't want to tear apart my kegerator just for that. So I ordered this, this flow control faucet, and it works wonderfully. Now, I still highly recommend sticking with the um, balance line system. Don't use the flow control faucet as a crutch uh, to counteract an unbalanced and overloaded uh, draft system. Rather, uh, my my approach is I see the, I see it working best as balancing your system with the, just the right line length for the lowest pressurized beer that you'll have in your kegerator or you think. So like it's say like a brown ale at like 10 PSI or something, right? Uh, and and balance it for that. And then when you put, you know, like a high in it, like 14 or 15 PSI or a cider at, at 20 plus PSI or root beer, which I do sometimes too, at like 30 PSI, uh, you can actually now dial it down, and, I, and that's been working so far, and I'll do a video on it. Now, as far as the nitro brew, yeah, um, I would like to do that now. Uh, I just have to buy their attachment and come up with the recipe. Actually, I just realized, in order to do nitro brew, you also need nitrogen. I don't have that, and it would require a new investment in a new tank, but uh, I'll think about it. Yeah, I'm going to write, write that one down, too. Nitro beer. All right. Am I doing any giveaways? Well, uh, I wasn't. Well, I did one giveaway back. Oh, man, my center. I gave away one of these uh, signs back here like this, right? And uh, turns out that was kind of a pain in the butt uh, to, to do it legally. Now I've, now, I've seen many people do this on YouTube illegally, and they don't even know they're doing it illegally. I mean, the fact they haven't been caught is great for them because I mean there's too many other important things to bust people on in this country than than uh, a sweepstakes violation for trying to share stuff with with your viewers. However, uh, U.S. law and international law is even more strict uh, that you have to follow set procedures. It's got to be completely random. You have to have an open enough to everyone um, who's not even a viewer or a subscriber. I mean, you can't put any conditions on it. Is basically it, which is fine too. But then I have to you have to pay to ship it. I have to get the gift. Um, and I haven't come across anything worthy of doing a giveaway for yet until. So uh, if I have a few more of these left over after uh, I sell what I can sell and keep what I want, uh, I may end up doing some giveaways of beer mugs. But uh, this may not be for a couple months maybe yet until I figure out who's buying them and how many I have left and all. And I might do some stickers. I got some new gear on that on that Teespring website. Um, if you notice, this this shirt is a different color. This is the black shirt. I I, I just got this shirt. Now I, I've I've worn I've worn that tan or olive drab shirt before a lot, right? Um, and so I went to that store and, and I updated some color choices. I added uh like like uh, like phone cases for for the iPhone with with my logo on them. I got beach towels, all the stuff they allow me to turn on, basically, except the tote bags. I just said, go ahead and sell it. I don't care, right? So um, maybe I'll grab something from there uh, to uh, to uh, do a giveaway on as well. Just haven't had much time to even um, sit down to do a live stream, let alone plan another giveaway. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I won't. It just means I haven't had time. Um Okay, this is a great one from Grow Your Own. Release a round, a round of stem tulip glasses, and I'll definitely buy. Well, funny you say that because that's next on my list, um, or something similar. Actually, I was thinking more like um, whiskey snifters or those Glen Cairn type whiskey sample glasses, kind of like tulip glasses, I guess. Is that maybe the same thing? Uh, but but they're not stemmed. Uh, but because I like to drink whiskey, bourbon, and things like that as well, and I would like to, I think that would be cool to like hold a snifter in your hand with my little logo right on the front there. Up, that almost looked like a dirty uh, hand. Anyway, 
but uh, yes, that, that that is on my mind. Um, however, I want to see how this turns out of sending these out and see how many break and don't break and how much it costs me to do this because I think I'm selling these at a, as a at an actual loss, folks. Actually, honestly, I I was hoping I'm making a few bucks, but after after including the cost of boxes, packaging, shipping, PayPal, transaction fees, taxes. Um, I'm lucky just to basically break even on, on, on this first batch here. So I, another concern, if I were to do that, how much are people willing to pay? Because I had to charge or ask for $16, hopefully just to break even on this mug. Um, so, uh, and I have yet to ship them all out and get feedback from everyone who I sent those to to see if they came all in one piece, because that's another concern. I packed the heck out of these things and I'm still worried that they'll break in shipment. And I, I have nothing else to offer them because I'm giving them all away basically now. Uh, let's see, um, milkshake IPAs. Well, I well I made one, um, the Northeast IPA back in, geez, springtime, early summer. The Chad uh, on the grandfather or was it during the winter time I did that? Wow, man, that's a while ago. Um, I, I love them, but if you know my videos, I did a follow-up video about to what six weeks later <laughs> uh talk about the downside to them and that's the fact they don't last very long and 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 that's to be expected right you, you get these uh north northeastern new, new england style milkshake ipas out there and they um i mean they load them they front load them you know with all the hops flavor and aroma and it's great up front but they're very volatile oils and hop essences, right? They'll disappear and go away relatively quickly. You need to drink them really fast. And um, in fact, the best examples I've ever had when I travel um, of, of that style is right at the local brew pub, right out of the um, right out of their fresh kegs or, or their vats or whatever. Um, and the worst examples I've had, I've always been canned and bottled versions because they've been sitting on the shelf for too long. I, I, I just, uh, I love them when they're fresh and they're okay when they're not. That's basically it. Uh, habanero Kolsch. Okay, I'm not writing that one down. I like habanero flavors. I like Kolsch. <laughs> but I, uh, again, I drink the beer to refresh my palate, not to make me reach for a, yeah, another beer to wash it down from the heat. So, but that's, a, that's an interesting idea. Uh, okay, I'm trying to get caught up on you guys here a little bit more. Um, uh, let's see somebody asking Chad. Uh, Chad, are you out there? Somebody's asking a question in the list. I I didn't tell Chad I was doing this because I again it was just more of a spontaneous thing I just thought about doing here today. I didn't really plan this out very well. Uh, oh, thanks. Oh, oh, Australia. Yeah. Again, uh, hey, thanks, Robert. Yeah, I so for some reason I'm not sure. Maybe you can help me uh, explain this to me. But I have a. It seems according to my YouTube analytics and a, and a lot of feedback and comments like what you just gave me, I have a pretty sizable um, su subscriber or audience base in Australia. I mean, they're, they're they're always among my top five countries in terms of views and subscribers and everything. So um, I find that cool and interesting and perplexing all at the same time. I'm not sure how that came about, but if you want to maybe opine in the comments, that would be great as to what that might be. Let's see. Uh, Wanders, it's not bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. So, Clive Davis, you say uh, the only reason to avoid kegging is if you're on a shoestring budget, which is what just about everyone I know started with, with bottles, and 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 eventually there comes a fork in the road where you quit brewing or you buy kegs. I quit brewing. <laughs> I uh, wish I didn't quit brewing, came back to brewing, but only would do it if I kegged. So I, you know, I, I invested in the kegging equipment then. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten back into home brewing. So those are very good words. Um, if you're on a budget, yeah, otherwise, go go keg. Uh, okay. Um, okay, folks, right, let's see. What's the weirdest beer I've ever brewed? Uh, weirdest beer ever brewed. I, again, uh, I haven't, I don't brew a lot of strange brew, brews, although that was a good movie. If you haven't seen Strange Brew from the early 80s with uh, 
Paul and Doug McKenzie, the actors who, who played them, was that Rick Moranis and uh, who was the other guy? Anyway, if you haven't seen Strange Brew and, and you like beer, go watch that movie, man. It's hysterical. Anyway, it's cheesy, of course. It's comedy, but it's, it's hysterical. So the weirdest beer I've ever brewed. Um, I'm not too adventurous because I like to make beer. Other people like to drink as well. Um, it's a lonely enough hobby at times where I'm the only one who drinks my own beer. I want to make beer that not only that do I enjoy, but many more people also enjoy. Uh, the weirdest beer I ever made was a, maybe if you want to call it weird, I wouldn't call it weird, but it, was, it may have been like a coriander, lemon, uh, Weiss beer or something like that once upon a time. You know, it's, I mean, it's not all that strange, right? But to me at the time it was, because I'm like, ooh, coriander and beer, ooh. Well, now I do wit beers and other things with coriander just fine today. But back then, I thought that was pretty weird. Uh, let's see. Uh, making meads. Yes, Tim. Yes, I've made several meads. Yes, I have. Uh, in fact, I have some still down in my fridge down in the bar area uh, from about a year or two ago. I've not gotten around to. Uh, meads, are, meads are so easy to make. Um, I don't see why more people don't do it. But on the other hand, I do see why people... Other people don't do it because it, for, for many people, it's, it's an acquired taste. I mean, my wife won't drink them, although she, she would drink it and go, this is good, <laughs> right, sometimes. Uh, so I quit making meads the past couple of years. I've focused more on my wines, which I actually have to go pick up um, some grapes this week. Uh, it's that time of year. I'm going out and getting uh, several cases of new grapes again uh, this week, I hope. If they're not already gone, and I'm going to make a new batch of red wine, a batch of white wine this fall. Uh, again, getting in the way of the home brewing kind of puts it off to the side while, while working the wine. Um, but as far as meads, it's really easy to do. You buy like three pounds of honey, a one-gallon jug. Uh, let's see, some some well, some corn sugar or well, actually, no, 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 water. No, no, water. So th th three pounds of honey. You dilute it with water in the in the one-gallon jug. You throw some yeast in there, some yeast nutrient, and an airlock on it, and you let it bu bubble for a month or two until it stops bubbling, and then you can cap it and let it sit in a dark place for six more months while it kind of finds itself, basically, kind of like a wine, right? And there's ways to, uh, there's different types of honeys. They can get orange blossom. Uh, my favorite one was a Brazilian pepper plant-based one. It was, you know, it's, it's a one where the bees, it was a hot pepper a farmer field when most of the honey came from the flowers from those hot peppers. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. It, it absolutely was. Um, I probably will do one again, uh, maybe this, this winter, this fall. Uh, if, if things slow, slow down a bit, I would like to get another small batch of meads again, just to have on hand for, for the, that special occasion where I want to share a mead, you know. Uh, another thank you to my spreadsheet. Uh, Daniel, your second all grain batch, nailed it. Uh, nailed all your numbers. Yeah, awesome, man. Hey, salute to that again. Uh oh, I'm getting low here. I may have to get a refill here, but I don't want to break the um, break my train of thought by reaching behind me and grab another one. Oh, it's so far away. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that 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 that's that's good that you get all your numbers, and that's exactly why I did that spreadsheet because um, I was using store-bought or commercial software for off and on, and I didn't much like the black box aspect of it. I wanted to know the assumptions, the equations, and everything in there, and I was able to dial this thing in where um, I got pretty darn accurate numbers. Um, now, for the past year with my spreadsheet, I have not quite hit my exact numbers, and as you might know, I upgraded my my, uh, my old brew system to a bigger system, then I got the grandfather, then I was doing a brew in the bag Nash, now I'm doing this Brewery Plus review pretty soon. All these different systems and my uh, efficiencies and things are going to be all over the place until I dial them in and stick with one brew system. Um, but once you do that, you stay with one system and you get your efficiency figured out for your process and you put everything in there, um, it works pretty good. Yeah, so thanks for the uh, feedback. It's awesome. Um, let's see, let me come on down the list here a little bit. Sorry if I'm skipping some folks. Uh, there are guys. I'm just trying to get caught up here uh, a little closer to the end if I can. Um, cheers from Ottawa, Canada. Hey, yeah, cheers to you, bud. I, uh, again, I was saying uh, Australia is one of my top five countries. Uh, 
so is Canada. New Zealand, Canada, Australia, uh, the U.S., of course. And there's usually a fifth one that comes in there, um, in and out. I, I don't know if it's like Brazil or it's Chile. Or, it's uh, down in South America, basically. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Venezuela, Juan Carlos Leon. Cheers from Venezuela. Hey, man, how you doing? Uh, I've been following the news about you guys down there. Uh, my heart goes out to you guys uh, down there with the hyperinflation and uh, all that nonsense, not be able to, like, with the average uh, Venezuelan lost 25 pounds this last year and, or something like that because of the lack of food and, and things. You guys, man, I, man, I'm just sorry to hear all that, man, but uh, I hope you're able to find beer at least. You know, a little bit. Uh, let's see. Great live. All right. Thank you, Eclipse Brewing. Uh, what What's your real name anyway? I, I uh, anyway, you, you can share it later if you want. But let's see. Uh, let's see. Milkshake IPA. IPA. Like, oh, oh, it's a little different. Oh, okay. So a milkshake IPA because everything I've seen and read, everyone inter interchangeably uses. Uh, the, the term with the any IPAs. I mean, it's the first I've heard that there was a, a, a difference to it. I think I think part of the confusion was that people, or maybe it was just me, maybe, I don't know, uh, it thought uh, because it was cloudy and hazy, it must look like a milkshake or something. But I guess, okay, I was wrong. I was corrected. So uh, with lactose, though, that would be interesting. Uh, gardening videos. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, Greg uh, Simpson, gardening videos. Well, you know, if I showed you my garden right now, you might laugh in my face. Uh, I, have a, I have a relatively small garden because I have a small postage size lot here in this little tiny house that's on it. And, uh, and so I grow half my stuff in pots on my patio right out there the back door here. And on the side of my house over here, I have, um, I, I built like a tomato trellis out of uh, electrical conduit piping and I strung string across it like a spider web. And I got long binding tomatoes going all the way up to the sky and falling over and coming back down. I got cucumbers, peppers and things, but I've uh, over gardened a little bit. Um, I've grown too many tomatoes on it for too many years in a row and the yield has gone to heck. Uh, just pretty much got a pretty low yield this year. I, I only can about five quarts of tomatoes versus like you know a, a few dozen in the past. So uh, a gardening channel I'm not probably the best one for that. I do subscribe to a bunch, though, and that's where I get my tips from. But as far as me doing a host of one, eh, probably wouldn't go off so well. I look more like a fool than anything else, probably. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Plus one for kegging. Great movie. Great movie, yes. That was the strength brew reference, I imagine, I hope. What kind of engineer am I? Uh, well, um, a master of or – or the jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, is the same, uh, but actually I was, I am, I guess, a mechanical engineer by practice. Um, my degree was in, uh, was down at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. It was, uh, it was te technically titled general engineering. So you had, you had structural um, engineering, you had mechanical engineering, electromechanical uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, engineering law, I kind of a well-rounded education, and I uh, and I kind of focused more on the mechanical engineering side of all that, and then I practiced as a, as a mechanical engineer in, in aerospace for several years, uh, in the automotive industry, high high energy particle physics, medical devices, consumer products. Uh, I've kind of been a, a, all around basically over the years. And now I'm not really doing engineering anymore. I'm, I'm more on the engineering IT side where I manage the engineering software that, that where I work currently uses. So I actually um, look to improve our processes and workflows basically with the software. Uh, let's see, am, am I a hop, slap, a hop slam fan? Yes, uh, I am. But not as much as I recall being. Uh, the, the very first time I had it years ago, it was like, wow, this is really good. Then I had it again a year, because it comes out once a year, right? And I was like, yes, yeah, it's pretty good. But my expectations were a little higher than, than the reality. And with each passing year, I, I've had it. And now I've had, been had it every year, because it's hard for me to find here, too, by, by the way. 
But when I do get my hands on it, it's um, it's good. It is. I just think it's a little overhyped, um, as a, as a honey beer goes, I guess. But it's good. I will not turn one down. In fact, I will buy it if I see it on the store shelves. I just uh, don't want to pay twenty bucks a six pack for it. Let's see. Let's see. Mother. Let's see. My spreadsheet is the bomb. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Use it for my hypervisor. Good. Again, thank you very much. I like it too. Um, home brewing. Craft beer scene is growing big time. Okay, yeah. Larry, go get a beer. All right. Well, okay. Well, we're at a crossroad, crossroads because it's not, it's nine o'clock right now, and I I'll I'll grab another beer, but that means I'll probably be talking for another fifteen more minutes probably. So if you're telling me to get a beer, I'll do that right now. But I'll still be online here for fifteen minutes. So give me a fifty second. Uh, there we go. How's that? Yeah? Hey, I'll be an old stool? Doggy style? Huh? 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 No? No? Okay. My buddy left this here the, the other day. He likes the old styles. I actually, I was just joking. I'm, I'm actually going to have another half acre beer uh, by, well, it's Vallejo by Half Acre. It's an IPA. This is like one of their, their better beers, and it's uh, seasonal, too. I, I don't think they make this year-round. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this up. Go ahead and type away there. Like, just give me a moment here. Here. I'll, here I'll, I'll let you know. I better not. I might spill on the keyboard. I'll back up. <laughs> All right. So what we got here? Uh, Ken says uh, he doesn't understand why I don't have one, one million subs. Well, you know. I, 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 I think I'm doing all right. I mean, it's just like a niche, um, a niche topic, right? Uh, brewing and barbecuing, brewing and cooking in general, brewing even just by itself, even cooking is a niche, niche channel. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find cooking channels with more than a, than a couple hundred thousand subscribers at, at the most, um, right? Um, most of them have a few thousand. Some of them have 25,000, you know, some have a couple hundred thousand uh, for, for the cooking. But as far as the homebrewing side goes, I mean, go out there and look around. There aren't a whole lot of homebrewing channels, and there aren't a lot of them that have a lot of subscribers, let's say. So, I mean, there's one guy, I think I think Craig Tube has got like 60-something thousand subscribers, but he's been doing it since 2006 or something like that, 2007. He's been doing it for 12 years. I've only been doing this for like six and really only with any sort of effort for the past three or four, really. So uh, the fact I got like 32 plus thousand subscribers now, I I, I love it. I, I think it's awesome. Um, why I don't have a million? It, it's a niche market. I mean, I don't play Xbox in my parents' basement for other kids to watch me play. I don't uh, I do not uh, do makeup channels or talk gossip and stuff or whatever. I don't have a, you know, a, what? I, I don't have a hook to uh, draw more than people who are interested in, in brewing. That's just what it is. That's fine. Um, let's see. Oh, I think I just, wow, you guys really started typing while I was gone. <laughs> Get a beer. I got it, guys. All right. So, again, this is the Vallejo uh, by Half Acre. If you guys never had any Half Acre beers and you can find them in your store, try them. I, can, I mean, if you're a, a fan of home brewing and like good beer and – and you like pale ales and IPAs? I mean, this is good stuff. I mean, it's like well balanced. It's not like over the top hops. You know how the current trend is out there, and, and so many of these craft breweries now are trying to out bitter and hop, hop each other to the point where you, you no longer even taste beer. You just taste the hops, and that, you know that's okay once in a while. But as a regular course of events, I just want a good beer that's drinkable, that's that, that smells good, tastes good, and has a good balance of like actual malt and grain with the hops rather than just all hops you know I, those whole one trick pony beers where, where they try to out ibu the other i just, I just kind of gotten tired of that honestly uh, let's see uh beers uses hops so this channel equals gardening <laughs> yeah and i've done a couple gardening related videos like how to can my tomatoes for example uh, last year. I mean, it's, it's one of those off 
topic uh, topic videos I did. It was related, but not like directly related uh, to what I do here. Uh, what's my preferred time to dry hop? Well, uh, I, well, I don't really. I'm more like blase fair about that, honestly. I mean, like for example, uh, this last batch of beer that I brewed with Paul and Mike up in Wisconsin, um, I threw my hops in there on the tail end, my dry hops on the tail end of fermentation. And for my fermentation, it was after about five or six days. Um, it did really start table down, uh, tapering off where the where the airlock activity was real slow. And I wanted some air still in there because I wanted to purge the, the uh, airspace out um, again with more of the CO2 that's coming up. And uh, I just left it in there. So it's been in there for over a week and a half more now. Am I worried? No. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I, I just don't worry too much about those things. Unless I'm trying to reproduce something I've done already again, which is why it's important to have a recipe, to take notes on the recipe. So if you want to repeat it again, you can follow those notes and try to get it the same way again. But... I, I've I've become more carefree in that regard. I mean, if, if it's a little different, it's fine. Um, a maple donut nitro stout that sounds good too. Uh, oh, Chad's on. Hey, everybody, say say hi to Chad. <laughs> Chad's online. Uh, he says, damn, "Damn it, I was just looking for that. I was going to get it." Oh, I, I must have missed his earlier comment. He must have posted earlier up in the, in the feed. Sorry, Chad. I'm scrolling. Skipping over stuff along the way, uh, on the way down the list. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do I use any fining agents, uh, gelatin, or any other to make beer clearer? Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I don't use gelatin. I use my 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 only fining agents for beer I've ever really bothered to use were in the boil, and it was just technique, right? So, uh, you know, I used to use Irish moss to grab the was it the cold break. Or no, the hot break out of the boil. Uh, now I use World Flock tablets because they're just more convenient than having to rehydrate Irish moss. Um, the cold break I get from quickly chilling the wort, I guess. Um, and I let it ferment with some new yeast nutrient, right? So the yeast, I get a strong, healthy yeast starter going. It, it ferments pretty strongly, pretty fast, and pretty thorough. And the yeast drops out by the end of that second week. And to the point where I never felt like I had ever had to find my beer. Now, I find my white wines with uh, not gelatin. I uh, It's a clay, uh, bentonite. It's a clay that uh, winemakers use to, to clarify their white wines. I've done that before, uh, but not, not gelatin. I've just never seen the uh, need for it. I would try it. In fact, I, I would probably do an experiment in the, in the future if I made another 10-gallon batch again like I did recently. And maybe one I won't find, one, the other one I will, and maybe I'll have a little taste testing from that. So that's not a bad idea. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, let's see, Craig 2. Yeah, Craig 2 got you started, Landon. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He's been on, going on for a while, two, 2011, uh, and, and, and longer than that, actually. Uh Let's see. Brew it and they will come. Now, honestly, I never watched Craig Toop up, up until recently because I didn't know he existed <laughs> until somebody turned me on to him uh, through one of these live feeds or a uh, comment uh, section. So now I do su subscribe to him, but uh, it wasn't until the past year or so. Let's see. Now, okay, so synopsis it says he wants some new glare spotted cow. Now, I know what you mean. It's a cream ale. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's a cream ale sold uh, by New Glarus Brewing Company, and it's only available through, for distribution in Wisconsin. Now, so every time I go to Wisconsin, I stop in at a gas station, a grocery store, wherever, and I'll pick up something from there on, on the way through. Um, I don't normally get Spotted Cow, because I've had it so, so much over the years, it's just like an average beer to me, but what I do like are their Lambic beers that they've had over the years. Uh, their, their Cherry Lambic, their called their Belgian Red, Cherry Red. Uh, there's Serendipity, which is a raspberry, apple, and uh, cherry mixed fruit lambic style beer. And, uh, and they have a, f a few others too, are really awesome. Um, so, you know, okay, so somebody's saying that, that Craig over at Craig Tube 
well, only uh, post every once every six weeks or so. I know the feeling, man. I mean, this, this, uh, although I enjoy this activity like this here and now, uh, th there's a whole lot of behind the scenes work when it comes to putting together like a video or from coming up with the ideas to um, filming it and buying everything you need to do it, planning your shots, re refilming some, some shots that didn't come out well, if, if you're able to. Uh, doing multiple takes, uh, hours and hours of video editing, hours of looking for the right uh, sound bites, clips, music, uh, special effects even. I mean, you don't need to do all these things, but if you don't do at least some of these things, like good lighting, good audio at least, and, ha and have a good continuous flow in your video and it doesn't drag, you're not going to get any viewers. I mean, I don't watch videos that have bad sound, bad lighting, or or uh, or just drag on. I just click away, and that's why I don't want to have that happen here. And so, putting all that effort into it does uh, kind of start to wear on you over time because now you got to follow up and advertise your videos and social media. You got to answer questions. All good stuff, but it's all time, more time, right? So, after a while, um, you start realizing where the year went, and your kids are growing up, and it's like. What, what, what happened, you know? So, so I can totally see um, someone's slowing down. In fact, I've I've slowed down a little bit this summer myself, right? And um, and it's always I need something to reinvigorate me to like get back on the horse and start spitting out videos weekly because it's a huge effort to spit out videos that often. Um, so I may have to settle back into a more of a once a month kind of setting at some point, but uh, but we'll see. Hmm. All right. So, um, oh, hold on a minute, folks. I got, I just scrolled right past somebody again. Chad said, uh, <laughs> thanks, Chad. Chad, my brother Chad says, um, hey, Larry, you can cook it and they will come. That, <laughs> that is pretty true for those of you um, who live near me um, or who have been to my house at least or family, who can, well, even like, like Chad who has come over, but I'm referring to more like neighbors. I'll have food on, on the grill, on the smoker, whatever, overnight, all the next day, you know, like a brisket. I'll be doing ribs all day or something. And uh, it sort of seems like coincidental that as soon as I go out there with a big platter and some gloves, you know, whatever, uh, all of a sudden it's like, hey, hey, Larry, hey, Larry, what you doing over there? Hey, that looks good. You know, and everyone sort of comes over and, like, oh man, that looks really good. Oh man, can I have some? And you're like, sure, why not? You know, and carp a piece and, you know. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so Chad knows very well. In fact, if you want to see a prime example of this on one of my videos I've already done from several years ago, uh, go to my channel and do the, the, the little hourglass on my channel bar, not the main one, but the one that for my videos on there, and, and search. Um, bourbon maple ribs i think it is maple bourbon glazed ribs i think it is and that video i start off all serious trying to show how to do the sauce and you know, setting up your grill and the smoke's coming up and the meat on and it was all great and dandy and then about uh two-thirds of the way through the video you start hearing laughing and talking and all in the background well those are all the neighbors all hungry because the food's coming off and the sh and all of a sudden you see all of the neighbors eating my food all over the place, all the patio and everything. Um, so anyway, so so that's how it is. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, I just picked up a smoker. Have, do you ever do any smoking? Yeah, that's my uh, that's the second half of my channel, beer and barbecue. Uh, I've been doing. In fact, this channel started off as a barbecue uh, channel, and it had some success. You know, I got a, I don't know, maybe eight hundred subscribers or something but by that point a thousand and, and it was growing a little slow and and I and I realized in a buddy of mine um baby back maniac uh, go check uh check out his channel you know he's a food channel he's a foodie too right he's got lots of grills and cooking stuff and uh he started out about the same time as me and uh he had a natural knack for like the food stuff and, and he, but he had some good advice he said Larry focus on the home brewing that is a niche market there. I said, well, yeah, but I like food. I want to do the food videos. I mean, I, I'll brew at home, 
personally and I'll do the food video. Well, and so I started doing some of the brewing videos and all of a sudden like it was like things just took took off from there. So I figured, okay, well that's the way to go with this channel is more more beer, a little less food. Well, which is fine. I, I do both. I I cook way more than I brew, but there's a gazillion cooking channels out there all vying for eye, eyeballs and subscribers and it's a very saturated and overcrowded market in my opinion so i am going down the the path the path less traveled and focusing more on the beer with food yeah i hope that makes sense uh let's see let's see tim says hi to chad got any advice for a mechanical engineering student i am watching you and doing differential equations homework i feel sorry for you bro i'm going to brew a paleo this weekend see man yeah so differential equations uh I couldn't solve one of those today. In fact, I could, I could barely solve them then, uh, quite quite frankly. In fact, I started to lean more on, on like uh, Mathematica or back then or like MathCAD and other programs now to like do that, that work for me. But um, any advice? Uh, don't quit, I guess. I mean, stuff gets hard. I mean, I, I tried to quit a number of times as a, as a mechanical engineering student. Um, in fact, it got to the point where I, I was actually trying to transfer out of the uh, school entirely and transferred to a different major at a different school because it was so so hard my first year or two. But uh, I st but I stuck with it. Switched majors from mechanical from aerospace to mechanical to civil engineering to to general back to mechanical. By the time I graduated, uh, you know I was just trying to find my way, and uh, I ultimately did. But uh, man, it's a lot of work. I I totally get it. I mean. Um, I just just say just 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 stick with it, and uh, don't let it make you quit, man. Because I mean, what, what else are you gonna do? Major in English literature or some other nonsense that doesn't make you any money? I mean, you get so you get your money invested already in uh, engineering. With and engineering's got a decent ROI, ROI still uh, on the investment here, right? Um, so unless you go into like you know, become a doctor or something, you know, whatever. I Stay with engineering. Just push through it. Oh, Chad's talking about the beer I'm drinking. Yeah, this is the this is the the Vallejo. I you might have joined in last or late, but oh, it's the it's the Vallejo. Actually, there's still a bit left in here. And then um, Chad says hi guys to everyone who hasn't seen this. Uh, do I ever use teas? And flavoring. Oh, dang it. This mouse is touchy, touchy, touchy. Ever use teas for flavoring aroma? Yes. Yes, I do. If you go back and look at my Lair Garden video, my wit beer recipe, my 2017 version, or my original 2012 version, or whatever it was, I have, um, I use chamomile tea. Uh, I think three tea bags for a five gallon batch, and it gives that wit beer sort of that. Refreshing lawnmower beer, I call it. I mean, it's better than lawnmower beer, but I, I call it that because it's like you're really hot, you're out there sweating, you're doing yard work, you're like, oh man, you want to just get something refreshing? Well, that whip beer, I, I call it the iced teas of beer or, or the iced tea of beer. It's oh, it's good though. It's good. Do I prefer plastic glass or stainless steels for manners? Well, um, it's, it probably shouldn't be a secret now. I've had about a year to a year and a half of playing around with various from fermenters, right? Um, I, I, I never used a bucket fermenter, ever. I, I went right to glass from the beginning, glass carboys. And the past uh, year and a half, I, I, I've been trying some plastic fermenters. I tried some stainless steel fermenters, and they all make the same beer. <laughs> so <laughs> makes no difference. Do I prefer... Well, what I prefer is what I already have, which is I got several glass carboys and I hauler strap to carry them around uh, so I don't drop them on my feet and shatter them. I have a drill bit attachment with, with a little wand that goes down the, the, the carboy and cleans the inside of the carboys for me to help get them clean and washed up real quick. All the other options have been a lot more work to use, set up, clean, and put away. Um, so as far as preference, I had to have to say glass. Now, if I had a stainless steel fermenter, that was like a, was, that was like a stainless steel carboy or something, I guess stainless steel would be okay. But I mean, I'm completely happy with like glass. 
I just don't break it. <laughs> um, I got, uh, hold on guys, I got, what do I use for, for fermentation control? No, you've not seen the video on how I do temperature control. Uh, who's that, Jared? Yeah, hi Jared. Um, no, I don't care. Frankly, I, I've, I've been fortunate in two things in my home brewing career. My brewing water, my tap water is my brewing water without any adjustment. It's Lake Michigan water from Chicago. It's good all around brewing water. Um, so I don't have to fool around with water chemistry very often or hardly ever, basically. And two, I, sh I was, I was going to, two, <laughs> um, anyway, is uh, my basement is, is in the 60s year round, basically. It's in the low to mid 60s in the winter, mid to upper 60s in the summertime. And I just put my fermenters down there, wrap them in the towel to keep the light away from them and everything, and let them ferment. It'll, it'll ferment between low 60s and upper 60s, and I just don't care. Um, I would like to have temperature control, of course, but I don't have it. I haven't had a need for it yet. I have been talking with the, uh, however, I, ha I have been talking with one of the people at the Grandfather in New Zealand, uh, the, the uh, guy who gave me the Grandfather to do some videos on. He has said that he would send me their glycol chiller and conical fermenter uh, set when it was available in the U.S. Um, again, which should be about now, I think. So I probably should give him a call back. But I would probably do a video uh, with that if it ever came in. But as a uh, do-it-yourself, that would be cool to do. I just don't have a need for it right now. So it's on like my list of things I'd like to do, but not on the forefront. Can I suggest a yeast? No, I can't. I... Um, you may already know this, right? But or maybe not. Maybe that's what you're asking. But yeast is a huge contrib uh, contributor to the flavor of your beer, right? Well, my table's shaking here. Hold on. Uh, so I like to try to tailor the yeast strain I use to the style of beer I'm trying to make or I'm making. So it I, it just really it depends. Are you looking for a neutral yeast strain that has very little? Flavor contribution, like a US05 uh, dry yeast, which I've been using recently more often, or even like the Y yeast um, American Ale strain, that's that's pretty neutral. But uh, so if you're looking for something that's just middle of the road, I'd say something like that. But I would really like to tailor my my yeast to the style that I'm trying to brew. Uh, handy, handy Panty, Larry, have I watched many of your videos? Uh, great content. Oh, thank you for information. Good, thanks. Um, I don't believe I am very far. Do you ever have a meet and greet? Oh, wow, that's a good, that's interesting, actually. Uh, that would be kind of, you know, folks, I don't think of myself like, as, like, as like a, as like a celebrity or nothing. I, I just, it's just, it's just kind of weird to think of it that way, I guess. I mean, I, I, I didn't occur to me to even think about that. I, I would if, if I, if I, man, if I knew of a, um, a group of people who were willing to show up at, at a bar or something in the area, uh, definitely would do that. Um, I said earlier, I'd like to do a, maybe a, a brew day video or some kind of video here with, uh, with some people, maybe depending on what the topic is or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think that would be cool. I just don't know how to start that process and who would be interested. Maybe I could throw a shout out somewhere. But uh, honestly, I, I'm kind of afraid of disappointment. What if I say, hey, let's meet at XYZ place in XYZ town um, next Tuesday at 5, and, like, no one shows up. And I'd be like, <laughs> you know, so, you know, maybe. I think it'd be cool. I think that might be better for the winter time, though, um, when I'm looking to get the heck out of the house and do something, um, you know, outside more often. Probably. Let's see. Uh Does it ever? All right. Well, there's one guy that's going to get banned. Uh, I'm going to put you in timeout there, buddy. I'm not going to say who that was, but I'm sure y'all probably read it already. I just, I'm just getting down to the bottom of it now. Um, oh, and Ken, thank you. Oh, yeah, Ken. Ken's one of my patrons. Um, that's another thing. Uh, I have a Patreon page. 
out there. I don't talk about it much. I mean, I, I do put links to it in the bottom of my video, of all my videos and on my website and places and things like that, right? Um, but I don't make a big deal about it. It just feels kind of weird to ask people for, for money to help fund this program. And I and I do need it in order to, to uh, do more than what I do. I mean, things cost money like equipment, cameras, sometimes homebrewing gear or things that I have to buy. Um, that I would like to buy, but I just don't because I got money to spend here at home with the family and other things, right? I just, I don't have, um, the, uh, spare capacity to go out and spend money on my hobby left and right, um, to, uh, share with you folks. But some of you folks out there just can include it, you know, he's a patron over at, at, at my Patreon page. Now I open up another tier there. Uh, I only had one tier there for a while. If you know what the tiers are folks, um, you can like pledge a dollar or something for the first tier. I opened up a second tier, I think, called Kegs and Eggs recently, where you get a discount on merchandise. So go check that out, Ken, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, and I'm going to, I was going to open up a third tier for some kind of a mug club, you know, something to do around the mug club and doing like private live streams like this, but for a small group of people uh, who are Patreons. But um, I could barely find time to do these live streams. So. I got to find time on my schedule to have a re regular uh, meeting occurrence set up for, for those Patreons and trying to encourage more people over there to help fund this thing. And then um, that would be one of the perks is having more small group uh, live streams in, uh, going on than just one big one like this. Um, all right. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I keep getting skipped over here. Darn it. I go to scroll down and it just jumps like four pages on me. Um, my all green video. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what got me going. It looks like a little bit. I I did a, um, you know, and and that all green video, Ken, was um, was actually just sort of a last minute thing. I I was actually going to do yet another. I think maybe it might it might have been my third or fourth. Uh, home brewing video, which is sort of just a basic all-in-one. This is what I'm doing, making beer and general process kind of stuff for, for friends and family and those who didn't know how to make beer. I just did these little short videos. Not short, they're like 20 minutes long, but they're really like abbreviated basically um, on how I make beer. And I was doing like a fourth or fifth one. I think it was a blonde ale. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do this same thing again, film the same thing over again. So I said, you know, I'm going to film one, my next batch of beer in like six parts, and I figured out I was going to do one about, about cleaning and sanitation, one about all grain brewing, one about boiling, hop additions, all this stuff. So I created that that six part series is basically what uh, from like one basic beer that I made. I think it was a blonde ale, and I tried to dip it up into like logical steps so we can watch you know phase one or step two, whatever. And get through that and uh and i put it all out there and i forgot about it for like a year <laughs> basically and because it, it, it wasn't really being watched and then at some point it started taking off i don't know how and when and what well, i can tell you when i just don't know why i guess uh but thanks for uh the feedback um what did i do a brew to food pairing videos or videos well um i'm not too picky i like certain types of beers with certain types of foods Unfortunately, I don't always have the right types of beers with the right types of foods every single time I want to eat or, or cook. Um, like, for example, last last weekend I made a chili uh, from the tomatoes in my garden I had left over. I had some peppers from my pots in my garden. I had uh, some herbs and things. I thought, man, I'm going to make a really good chili. Well, I didn't have any homebrew, so I had to go out and buy this, you know, the, the Vallejo and the tuna cans here. Uh, the can fell off the table. And because uh, I, I like a nice hoppy pale ale, basically, with chili. Um, a couple of nights ago, I posted on Facebook and Instagram, I think, a video of, 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 of a food pairing. I had my homemade pasta sauce and meatballs and, and bread uh, and roasted garlic. So I did videos on all those different things served alongside a homemade wine that I also did a bunch of videos on a couple of years ago. So... Everything on that table and then that little short clip I posted on social media was, in fact, a true food and wine pairing, basically, just not beer. Uh, I would 
I do look for opportunities to, to, to do it though, but I, it, they don't come across very often. And when they do, it's usually parties where I don't really can't film. Uh, I'm either being rushed because uh, one person or one child has got to go off to the one practice and I got to go pick up another from somewhere else or I got to be at work by, or whatever. Um, and this time just doesn't ever work out all the time like you'd hope. But I do want to do more of those. Um, yes, my neighbors did love those ribs. Thanks for commenting, Robert. Um, and Greg, yeah, so again, the barbecued beans, that's my number one video um, on my channel. Still after, what, three years now? <laughs> so so uh, it, it's got the most views, gets me the most subscribers, and, uh, and it makes me the most money in uh, ad revenue. So uh, I'm thankful for that. Um, I get a lot of weird people commenting on there. If you haven't seen some of the strange comments people have posted on there, uh, it's just, I guess the general public is a little bit more twisted than us homebrewers who have a little bit more decorum in class. But anyway, if you want to go see some silly and sometimes funny comments, go check out that barbecue beans video. Um, let's see. So everyone's sharing their girl stuff. Yeah, cool. Do I really prefer my Kamado Joe uh, and find it for his better results? Uh, yes, but uh, not, oh, sorry. It's not just a simple yes. I mean, I, I have lots of reasons why I went Kamado and got rid of my offset smokers and, and my Weber grills. And I did it in a two-part, I explained basically all the reasons why in like a two-part video last year or year and a half ago where I said why I went Kamado, I think it's called. And I think there's six to eight reasons in there, but um, it's so much better all around, in my opinion. Uh, it uses less fuel. It's low maintenance. You're not stoking fire. You're not up, not up for 20 hours trying to get that brisket to cook. You get real, uh, it's impervious to weather, rain, snow, wind. It doesn't matter. I, I can cook year round. And up here, when it, when it gets cold in Northern Illinois, um, it's really nice to have those other smokers I had, you know, they were sheet metal and drafty and the, the heat and temperature would just, just porpoise everywhere. It was just terrible. I was just, just, I mean, I, I, I did it cause I, for, for the love of cooking, but when I realized there was a better way, I went right for it and never looked back. Um, okay, folks. I'm going to have to wrap, wrap this up pretty soon here, guys. It's already been a half hour longer, but let me try to get closer down to the end. Um, oh, Sean Taylor was asking a question about airlocks. He says, why, why, am I not see, why am I seeing not to use airlocks on starters? I'm confused. Well, so was I for a long time, and, and now I'm all straightened out. See, so now this goes back to some old logic whole homebrewing books I've had as well over the years. You know, step by step, how to make the yeast starter, chapter two, you know, oh, okay, oh, yeast starter, okay, page 34. You know, and you go through all this, and, the, and they've all pretty much said, said, excuse me, to use airlocks to keep the germs out because it's a pure, pure yeast culture. You're, you're trying to propagate pure yeast, and you don't want any impurities get, getting into your uh, yeast. Made total sense to me. So I did that for years. And look, the beers turned out fine. I got more yeast, right? Now, um, now if you ask, a, I guess, a microbiologist, I guess, <laughs> a biochemist, I guess they'll tell you, it's like the goal of a yeast starter is propagation of yeast, which means you want to multiply it. Yeast want oxygen to multiply to their uh, max, right? Uh, so you want to get oxygen in there, um, risking... Infection is the other, is the downside to that. So, depending on how you go, and I've kind of gone back and forth. I think I'm more down the line of now. I just cover my yeast starter with a little bit of sanitized aluminum foil and crimp it over the top, and then I put it on my stir plate. So the stir plate spins around and spins that yeast around to keep the oxygen infused in it, so we get maximum uh, yeast growth. Right, and and that's what I've been doing, and I've seen the, the yeast layer getting a little thicker down the bottom. I don't have any way to measure this, right? I just know I see it getting thicker, so I know it's working. Now the risk there is um, maybe some bugs or germs will get up in there and take your beer. I, I haven't had that happen yet, so maybe I was being overly paranoid, or maybe the homebrewing books I learned from were also being overly paranoid. 
Um, um, so now I choose for the, at least the first night or, or the first day to not use an airlock while the yeast is actively bubbling and burping out CO2. There's no air in, or, or, or bugs coming in when there's outgassing of, the, of all that CO2 coming out, I think. So um, if I'm going to let the yeast starter sit, though, um, for more than like 12 hours or, or a day, I'll probably put an airlock on it after that. So, you know. um, Let's see, what kind of yeast she? I'm sorry, guys. Um, have I thought about judging or entering a contest? No, I have well, not thought about it when I've read books or articles about it, you know, but honestly, I just, uh, I, I, I cook and I, I cook and I brew and I make wine and everything for myself and for my consumption and for family and friends and other people to enjoy. Uh, I, it's like I never thought about doing a contest. For one, I don't want a bottle. I just, you know, I'm not in a bottle. And once stuff's in the keg, it stays in the keg. I'm not saying use a growler, which aren't uh, allowed to be in these competitions. And it's like I just don't feel like giving my my hard work my my hard work away to total strangers to drink. I just, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't mind sharing it with, with people I know, but people I don't know, no. And as far as judging, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not that kind of a social butterfly. I'm not, I'm not really a member of the AHA or any other homebrewing club or anything. I, I never have been. Maybe I should. I don't know. I never saw the need for it before. Um, so I had never done it. Don't plan to do it unless someone invites me um, actually to come try. But uh, you know. uh, let's see. Um, oh, Sean's on here. Hey, Sean. Hey, man. Hey, Sean. I still got your... Uh, Old style here for you. You know, if you want it, I got like four or five cans here, here in my fridge. So, you know, <laughs> I'll just drink this instead, though. This is a different beer. So, Sean Wolf here, he's my buddy who uh, brought over the old styles. Um, all right, guys, we're getting down to the end. It's, uh, it's we're like over a half hour longer than I planned on. I'm going to wrap this up here. Do I? I had some topics I had jotted down really briefly in case I skipped anything. I mentioned that the, the Brewery Plus is coming. I got new items. Okay, so I mentioned that. Um, for those of you, one thing, for those of you who asked about the claw hammer system uh, and why I haven't reviewed it yet, it's not for my lack of trying. I've sent them, um, I've, I've reached out to them, and they just don't respond and don't get back to me. Uh, I think they're missing out here because a lot of you folks out there said say that you got them or looking into them. And would want me to give you my feedback on them, and I tried to reach out to them to explain this, and just it's crickets basically. So can't say I haven't tried to reach out to them. But I have. Um, so and that was it. That was the only thing left over on my list, folks. All right. So uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna give you another toast and sign off here. Cheers uh, again. Prost, Nostrovia, Skoll, uh, if you're from Sweden. Uh, all right, until, until next time, see you guys.